Praise God. Well, I have the opportunity to bring the word today, and I understand it's Mother's Day. I understand you have lunch plans. I understand that you want to get out of here, so I'll only preach for about an hour and a half. Everybody say amen. Today, I wanted to talk about the mother's blessing. Proverbs chapter 31, I want to just read the 28th and 29th verse. It says, her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. I want to read that in the King James Version because it sounds better. Amen. Come on. Father, we thank you for your word. God, I thank you for these women. I thank you for all of us that are here today. God, we want to receive the blessing you have for us in Jesus' name. Amen. The word blessed literally means to make happy, means to cause healing. It means divine favor to come upon you. It means all of your circumstances to be well. And that's the blessing we want to pronounce over the women today and over all the moms. And I just wanted to go through the word of God today and pull out a couple examples of ladies that just rose up and were blessed in the Bible. And I believe that's going to minister to us today. I found some funny quotes that I heard about mothers, and it, this was one that just came off the page. said, my kids call it yelling when I raise my voice. I call it motivational speaking for selective listeners. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think we get some amens there. When I tell my kids I'll do something in a minute, what I really mean is forget it. It's not going to happen. Mom is a woman who loves you unconditionally. Momster is what happens to a woman after they count to three. It's been said of a mom, I'm not an early bird or a night owl. I'm some sort of permanent exhausted pigeon. So wherever you find yourself in that mix, I want you to know there's a blessing for you today. Amen. I want to just pull out a couple ladies and uh, minister today because I really feel like they have something that's going to bless us all today. And I wanted to talk about a few blessings in the Bible that mothers showed us to have. The first one is the blessing of obedience. I want to look at the mother of Jesus, Mary, and she was blessed. She was called at a young age, and the angel of the Lord came to her and began to share with her the plan of God for her life. And how many know she had an opportunity? She could have said no. She could have said, I don't want anything to do with this. But she was obedient. And we know that when she said yes to God, great things began to happen to her. Now, this was something that wasn't the best thing for her at the time. Matter of fact, it got her into a lot of trouble. How many know, Mom, sometimes being a mother can get you into a lot of trouble? Amen. Being obedient can cause circumstances and situation that you didn't bargain for. Mary got into something. She said, I didn't bargain for this. I wasn't looking for this. But because she said yes, she ended up there. I remember when I went to college and my mother would say this all the time. She says, I didn't go to college, but all of a sudden I owe college student loans. I mean, anybody ever got into some trouble because of your kids? ever got into a circumstance or a situation that seemed like it was going to get you in a place where you didn't want to be. But Mary was obedient. Somebody say obedient. Luke chapter 1 verse 46. I love her response as she's singing to the Lord and she declares, my soul does magnify the Lord. And she's saying, my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. Be it unto me. She's saying, whatever you have for me, I'm going to do it because my soul will magnify the Lord. Many people are called to do something for God, but it's up to you to be obedient. For he has regarded the lowest state of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. She's saying, even though 
this isn't the greatest thing, even though this could get me in a predicament, my soul will magnify the Lord. My spirit rejoice in Christ my Savior. I'm going to say yes, and I'm going to be obedient. And because of that, generations to come are going to call me blessed. And I want to speak to you today the blessing of obedience. When we say yes to God, it unlocks doors. When we say yes to God and we're obedient to the call of God on our life, we see many things begin to happen in our life. She said, be it unto me. She said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to live. I'm going to walk in that. And she was carrying the promise gift of the Spirit. And as I was preparing, God said, there are many of us in this room today that you're carrying a calling of God on your life. You're carrying a gift on the inside of you. Maybe God has spoken to you and he said, I want you to go here. I want you to do this. I want you to talk to that person. And if you will be obedient, you're going to walk in the goodness of God. The word tells us that obedience is better than sacrifice. That we don't need to walk in disobedience. I tell my kids all the time, delayed obedience is disobedience. Not doing it when God tells you is disobedience. And sometimes God speaks a word to us and we look at where we're going to be, what it's going to get us into. And I want you to know today that just like Mary, she said, I'm right here and I'm saying yes to God. I'm opening my life up. I'm opening myself up to ridicule. I'm opening myself up to uh, pain, but I'm opening myself up to being used by God. And as you walk this journey of life, and especially in being a mother, you have to know that there are times when you have to do things that you don't want to do. There are times when you have to go places you're not ready to go. But when you say yes to God, there's a blessing on the other side of that. And I love this story because here Mary was, and she ends up going to visit her cousin Elizabeth. And if you know anything about the Christmas story and the birth of Jesus, you see here that Mary walks to Elizabeth, and she goes to see her. And Elizabeth was older, and she was what they called barren. She wasn't able to conceive. And many theologians believe that at this time, the baby that was in her womb was already dead and hadn't moved for years. And Mary goes in, and she greets Elizabeth. And I love this because the Bible says that when she greeted Elizabeth, Elizabeth heard her salutation. If you'll go to verse 39 of Luke chapter 1, it says when she heard that, the baby inside of her leapt. And I want verse 39, I'm sorry. It said the baby inside of her jumped and she was filled with the Holy Ghost. It's something about knowing that you are in kindred spirits with other people. Somebody say amen to that. The baby on the inside of you might have gone to sleep. The baby on the inside of you maybe hasn't moved in a while. The baby on the inside of you, what God has called you to do, what God has put inside of you, the dream that's on the inside of you, maybe you haven't seen it come to pass. But that's why it's important to come to the house of God. That's why it's important to come around like believers because when you do that, something is going to happen. The baby on the inside of you is going to leave. I don't know if you've ever been around somebody and all of a sudden they start talking about the goodness of God and that thing on the inside of you begins to get stirred up. When you come in here and you hear the word of God preach and all of a sudden the calling of God on your life begins to be stirred up. And I believe that we're getting ready to see women rise up in the power of the Lord and say, I'm going to do what God has called me to do. I'm not going to let anything hold me back, but I'm going to rise up in the power of God. Somebody say amen to that. Verse 39, now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And I want you to know that you are going to begin calling the thing that God called you to do blessed. Amen? 
You're going to begin looking at the assignment that God has given you and say there's a blessing in that. Maybe God's called you to be a prayer warrior. I look at here and I see many ladies that are powerful intercessors for the Lord. I see Diane Rogers right there in the middle. And I know when she prays for you, the power of God is going to flow. When Sister Samuels begins to open her mouth and speak the word of God, things are going to change. When Junie Nelson prays for you, something is going to happen. Amen. And that gift of God on the inside of you, that is a calling that God has placed there. And don't look at it lightly. Don't begin to say that this is just something that I've been burdened to do. This is something I've been blessed to do. Amen. And I love it because if Mary, I believe if Mary hadn't have been obedient and went to her cousin, maybe that thing wouldn't have happened. And we see that obedience called bl- caused blessing all over the place. And obedience leads to expectation. Amen? When you say yes to God, you begin to expect God to do something in your life. And here, when a woman is expecting, all of a sudden, she gets happy. Things begin to change. Expectation leads to preparation. How many know that when women start nesting they call it they start moving around they start getting things together they start changing things whenever my wife is pregnant I know what that means and my wife has been pregnant quite a few times I know what that means. That means things are getting ready to change. That things, our house is getting ready to change. It's going to cost me more money. April is great when she's pregnant, but right when it's time, I know because she gets up and she starts moving around. She wants to clean everything. She wants to change everything. She wants to redo everything. She wants to get rid of stuff. And I'm telling you, expectation brings preparation. And I'm telling you, when you get to the place where you have said yes to God and you say, I'm going to be obedient in what you've called me to do, that thing that you've placed on the inside of me, I'm going to raise my hand and say, be it unto me. Then comes expectation. And if you expect nothing, how many know you're going to get it every time? You have got to get in the place of expectation and say, I'm believing that I receive what God has called me to do. And as Jerry Savell comes in here and he begins to preach and others begin to share the word of God, you've got to get your Holy Ghost catcher's mitt on and say, that's me. Every time I hear someone being blessed, every time I hear God using someone to preach the gospel and to go all over the world, I sit right there and I have to say, I have two choices. I can either get jealous or I can say, I'm next. Come on, somebody. Is there anybody in this house that would say, I'm next? I'm not going to sit by. I'm not going to be idle, but I'm going to expect that God has put something on the inside of me and that he is going to use it. Expectation brings preparation. And if you expect God to do something in your life, then you need to do something. Come on, a wise proverb says God helps those who help themselves. It's not in the Bible. I know many of you are waiting for chapter and verse. But God helps those who help themselves. I believe that we've got to do something. So many people wait around for God to make a miracle. They wait around for God to do something. But God is saying, I want you to rise up and do your part. If you're expecting something, then you need to prepare for it. People say, I'm called to go on missions. I'm called to preach all over the world. Have you gotten a passport yet? Well, I'm waiting for God to open a door, bless God. Have you looked at... Where you want to go? Have you even looked at a map? I'm waiting for God to tell me and open a door. We need to prepare ourselves. And church, I believe that every message pastor's been preaching is getting us ready. He's putting divine expectation down on the inside of us. And if we will be obedient and say yes to God, then he's going to start preparing us to do what he's called us to do. Every calling of God on everyone's life takes expectation, takes obedience, and it takes preparation. If you're going to do what God's called you to do, then you've got to get ready for it. Look at your neighbor and say, get ready. Come on, say it like Bishop Jakes. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Elizabeth was at this place where she was 
up in age and she thought, I don't know if this is going to happen. Matter of fact, her husband began to laugh and began to talk uh, uh, negative about what was going to happen. And God struck him dumb and said, you're not going to say anything else. I think sometimes God needs to close our mouth so we don't say the wrong thing. I think sometimes if you can't say, your mother probably used to say this to you, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. That's right. And so many times when we're in that waiting period, when we're in that blessing of expectation, when we're waiting for God to do something, waiting for doors to open, waiting for things to manifest, it's important that we are speaking the right things. It's important that we are talking faith talk. For years, I did faith talk, and people would look at me like I was crazy. Here I was, a little boy, growing up in the ghetto. Come on, we were so poor at times, Jerry Lewis used to call to send us money. It was that bad, I'm telling you. Some of you will get that tomorrow. But here I was... And a little boy growing up in this situation, but God knew he had great things on my life. And my mother, who's sitting right there, waved and let everybody see you. I love that mighty, strong woman of God right there. And she would pour into me and she would speak to me, you can do anything that you put your mind to. Don't let anybody tell you any different. You can do it. But here I was, my circumstances didn't look the same way that my calling did. Anybody know what I'm talking about today? And you might be here today and you're in this situation where your future looks different than your present situation. You might be in a situation where what God has put on the inside of you, what God has made you pregnant with, what God has blessed you with and you've said yes to, you're saying, I can't be expectant because it does not look like it's ever going to get that way. It does not look like things are going to come to pass. Matter of fact, what God has put the dream in my heart, it looks the exact opposite. I don't know how it's going to happen, but let me tell you something. Expectation brings preparation. You need to begin to prepare just like it's happening. You need to be begin talking just like it's happening. You need to begin moving around and acting like it's already done. And if I had two or three people in here today that would say, Pastor Eric, I believe I receive and I'm expecting God to do something in my life and I'm going to change my thought and get ready for the blessing. I believe you're going to have divine expectations. And I love it because here she was, even though that thing hadn't moved, even though that thing seemed like it was lifeless, all of a sudden when Mary came in and the gift of God on the inside of her ignited with the gift of God on the inside of her, the Holy Ghost began to move and all of a sudden things began to jump. And I tell you what, I don't know about you, but over the last few weeks and months, I have had expectation on the inside of me that things are getting ready to change, Not only for this church, this city, this region, but for me. And if I were you, I'd get my Holy Ghost catcher's mitt out and say, I believe I receive that. It's coming to me. And I'm going to get ready. There's a blessing of expectation. There's a blessing of preparation. There's a blessing of obedience in our life. Are you getting something this morning? Hallelujah. God wants you... He wants to use you to bless other people. And just like Mary came in there just carrying the gift of God on her, and all of a sudden Elizabeth was set ablaze, I believe that there are people waiting for you to come in and begin to share the goodness of God on the inside of you. Next, I want to talk about the blessing of courage. I was telling Pastor Gayla about this, and she said, you just want to keep the men involved in your message. I said, oh yeah, all right, come on, man. This is for you. The blessing of courage. There is a battle in the Bible, and the Canaanites were being, they were fighting, and all of a sudden, in comes the captain of the enemy army, Sisera, and he's running for, for cover, and he goes to the tent of a woman named Jael. Everybody say Jael. Jael's name literally means mountain goat. Now, I don't know about you. I'd probably be upset if my mother named me Mountain Goat. I don't know. Especially if you're a beautiful woman, you're wondering why she named you Mountain Goat. 
I don't know if it was the horns or the nose or the snout, whatever it was. But I started looking at this, and literally I thought about a mountain goat. I've driven through the mountains up here, and all of a sudden we saw we were going up Pike's Peak, and all of a sudden we saw these little animals, sheep over there, and they're just kind of walking like nothing's going on, and I'm scared to death as we're driving. Let me tell you something. If you ever go visit Pike's Peak, do not drive. <laughs> this is just an aside. Unless you fear, you don't care about your life, do not drive. Take the cog, whatever. Pastor, I needed therapy. After that. Matter of fact, we had our therapy dog. We had Violet with us in the car, and I was rubbing the fur right off of her. Man, that's scary. But I saw these little mountain goats, and they're just hopping around, walking like nothing. And you know what? God began to show me when I was studying this, that a mountain goat can walk in any terrain. A mountain goat has feet that will not slip. And I'm telling you, if you are going to be a man or a woman with the blessing of courage on your life, you have to say, come hell or high water, I shall not be moved. You've got to say, no matter what's going on around me, I've got a firm grip on the solid foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I will not be moved. Even though it's raining, even though it's coming down, even though everyone around me is slipping, I'm going to stand firm in my faith and I'm going to say, I will rise up in the power and the might of Almighty God and I will be victorious. There's some ladies and men that are walking through tough times right now and the enemy would want to cause you to slip. The enemy will want to cause you to falter. But if you will rise up and say, I will stand firm in the foundation of my faith, you are going to see the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know when Kim was in the hospital and her family were standing by her side and, and the doctors would come and say all kind of stuff and they said, you know what, we're, they kept telling me, we're not moved. We're not moved. I said, well, what'd the doctor say today? It doesn't matter, we're not moved. Come on, and I'm telling you, we saw the victory because we chose not to be moved. And here this woman, J.L., sees Sisera, the captain, and invites him into her tent. And he says, I want you to stand guard and tell everyone you haven't seen me. He says, give me some water. And instead of water, the Bible says she gave him a bowl of lordly cream. Come on, somebody. She gave him some warm milk. Lull him to sleep. All of a sudden, he goes to sleep. And I love this. It's a little graphic. This is, you don't have to watch rated R movies. Just read your Bible. And she takes a tent stake that was used to fasten things together. She took the stake that was used to hold things in place. And that reminds me of the promises of God. Throughout your life, God will give you things that in the midst of everybody else falling apart, you can say, I'm going to use this and it's going to hold me together. I'm not going to fall apart. Everything else is unraveling, but I know I've got a promise. I know that I don't just serve the promise maker. I serve the promise keeper. Come on, somebody. And because he keeps his promises, you can take it to the bank. We just got done celebrating Easter and the fact that Jesus said, I'm going to die and get up in three days and he did it. You know what that makes him? That makes him a promise maker and a promise keeper. And I've got good news. If he kept that promise, which was the hardest promise of all, then he will keep every promise that he has made to you. And let me tell you something. If God spoke it, he's not a man that he should lie. If he said it, he's going to bring it to pass and you can hold on to the promises of God. And she took that stake, that, that, that pin that held things together. Hallelujah. And she grabbed the mouth. Is not the word of God like a hammer? that breaks the rock into pieces. Is not the word of God a strong hammer that can help us to fight through anything? And she took the word of God and she took the promises of God and she put that to the temple of that man while he was asleep. 
The Bible says with one blow, she nailed his head to the ground, drove the stake right through his temple, and nailed him to the ground. Come on. You've never heard a Mother's Day message like this before. But what God began to tell me is the enemy that is coming against you, the thing that's tried to rear its ugly head, you are getting ready to grab a hold of the Word of God and get a promise from God. And you're getting ready to take that thing out by the head and it shall not come up again somebody give the Lord praise and glory in this house today hallelujah there's a blessing of courage coming on you when you say yes to God when you're obedient to what he calls you to do when you expect that he's going to do it and prepare yourself you will have courage I believe there's some mountain goats in the room today. <laughs> Hallelujah. We shall not slip. We shall not fall. Use, what I love about JL is she used what she had. So many people say, I don't have this. I don't have that. I didn't have a great upbringing. I didn't have a great education. But what you do have is the word of God. I heard a preacher say, I don't know trigonometry. I don't know calculus. He said, I don't know trigonometry, but I know Deuteronomy. Come on, somebody. <laughs> if you know the word of God and you hold on to it, God is going to set you free. JL didn't run from a fight. She ran to a fight. And I know there's many ladies out here and men that you say, bring it on. When the enemy comes against you, when there's a fight, you're not going to run away. You're not going to run and hide. You're going to go into the battle. And I believe Pastor Gala has raised up daughters of Zion. What do you call them? Princess warriors that are going to run to the battle. Years ago, I was about eight years old, and I was in a pool, and I was just kind of messing around and I was swinging something around and this guy was out there now why he was all dressed in nice clothes at the pool I don't know but anyway me being the nice mild-mannered introverted child that I was if you believe that I've got some swamp land to sell you I started swinging this thing around well it gets water all over him and he jumps up and he's gonna yell at me and he's gonna try to put his hands on me or something and my little mama who was all about five one and a half come on. <laughs> she comes over there and instead of running from the fight she's right there and she gets in between me and this man and he says if you do that again it's going to be me and you and my mother goes over there and she steps in between and says if you talk to my son like that again it's going to be me and you <laughs> she didn't run from a fight she ran right to a fight. Come on, when anybody wants to say something to your kids, come on, how many of you ladies out there, you better not be talking about my baby. Come on, my baby's perfect. Knowing good and well they're demon seed, but you're like, my baby's perfect. That could not have been my baby. Don't you talk about my baby. When our girls were in school in Texas, we had an issue and they were supposed to turn in some paperwork and the due date said by this date. As a matter of fact, I think it was today on that day. By You have to have your stuff in by May 8th. So my wife takes the forms up there for the talent show and they say, oh, I'm sorry. That was due yesterday. And she says, uh, no, it says right here, May 8th. Today's the 8th. It says, yeah, it needed to be in before the 8th. And mild manner, Pastor April, everybody knows her, sweet kind, smiley all the time. She began to tell them, the paper says the 8th, today's the 8th, you're going to let my baby in the talent show. She sang, she practiced, she is going to be in there. <laughs> all of a sudden, they had to kick her out of the school. I'm telling you, it was, it was bad. They had to kick her out because it was testing and everybody had to leave, but the story sounds better if I say they had to kick her out of the school. And she comes out to the car and she says, I tell you what, they didn't want to do it, but, but she goes, I, she's going to get mad at me. She goes, I didn't want to get black up in there. <laughs> I 
I thought I was going to have to get black up in there, but they finally came around and told me. <laughs> she can say that by virtue of office right there. But sometimes as a mother, you just have that tenacity that rises up on the inside of you. And you say, come hell or high water, I'm going to fight for mine. I'm going to fight for what's mine. I'm not going to let any enemy come against it. I'm not going to let anything come against it, word or deed. I'm not running from a fight. I'm running straight into the fight. JL did not flee the enemy. She went right to it. And she made sure, and I believe that you and I are going to take back authority that the enemy has stolen. The head signifies authority. And that woman went right after the authority and she took it back. And the victory was won. And I'm telling you today, if you will not shrink back, if you will say, I'm going after it and I'm going to be a woman or a man with the blessing of courage, you're going to see victory in your life. Somebody say amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. The next blessing is the blessing of favor. And uh, I had this already, was beginning to speak this, and then when Brother Jerry came in, I said, Lord, I know that's confirmation right there. A lot of historians and theologians, commentators think that when Solomon was writing in Proverbs 31, that he was referring to Ruth. And we all know the story of Ruth, so I won't read all the scriptures and everything, but I just wanted us to uh, let us know that Ruth was like this Proverbs 31 woman. Here she was, she found herself in a difficult situation. She found herself alone, she found herself abandoned, if you will, she found herself going through a tough time. And I know on Mother's Day there are many women that are in here today and many men that this is a tough day for you because you feel like, I don't have the one that was there for me. I don't have the one that provided for me. Maybe you wish your mother was here. I know whenever you get sick, whenever something goes on, you want to pick up the phone and call your mother. And it's hard when you can't do that. It's hard when you don't have that one that's always been the protector and provider right there for you. And maybe you're here today and you're, you've recently been widowed or divorced or you're in a situation where you feel all alone. Here was Ruth. And the Bible said because she trusted God, because she didn't waver, because she went out and went to work. Come on, somebody. She didn't shrink back. She didn't hide. But she went out and she went to work. She found her field and she went to work in there and God did a miracle right there. The faithfulness you show today will reveal the favor you will live in. The faithfulness you show today will reveal the favor that you will live in. When you go through a tough time, when you feel like you're all alone, when you feel like you've been abandoned, or, or when you feel like there's no one you can count on, you have to be faithful. You have to go out and do what God's called you to do. You have to stay faithful to yourself. Stay faithful to what you're doing. And the faithfulness will reveal the favor you're going to live in. And we see here that she was all alone, but she was working. And all of a sudden, Boaz began coming by and telling his servants, leave handfuls on purpose. Come on, somebody. I could preach right there for about an hour. Leave handfuls on purpose. And she began to glean. She began to come and began to receive those handfuls on purpose. And as I was praying, God began to show me that he is leaving handfuls of peace in your path. There's somebody here today and you've been walking through a tough time and you've been trying to keep moving. You've been trying to keep going and you're saying, God, I want to lose my mind. I don't even know how I'm going to make it. But if you will look around right in the middle of your tough situation, if you will look around right in the middle of your pain, God has been dropping handfuls of peace. He's been declaring shalom, shalom. I don't know how I'm going to make it from one day to the next. All of a sudden, the peace of God begins to rain down on you. And if you will pick that up and receive that, you're going to see that God is going to sustain you. Maybe it's handfuls of joy. I'm fighting depression. I'm going through a rough time. I don't know which way is up, but all of a sudden God will begin dropping handfuls of joy. He'll begin dropping handfuls of healing. He'll begin dropping handfuls right in your path, but it's up to you to pick it up. It's up to you to receive it. And we can preach and teach. We can 
pray all day long. But if you don't get in the place of receiving everything that God is dropping, you will not be made whole. He's providing for you every day. He's giving you love. He's giving you joy. He's giving you peace. And Ruth and this Proverbs 31 woman are are synonymous. The Bible says that her character was noticed by all. It doesn't mean that she was proud, but she, people would see the Holy Spirit working in their life. And I want to prophesy to you that people are getting ready to begin noticing what God is doing in your life. People are going to begin seeing the power of God at work in you and saying there's something about you that's different. God's got something on you. And whenever I talk to you, I feel different. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's going to open a door for you to share the goodness of God in their life. Her character was noticed by all. And if you will rise up and say, I'm going to continue moving. I'm going to continue to be faithful. Even in the midst of adversity, your character is going to be known by all. She surpassed them all. She chose wise and godliness. She spoke with wisdom and kindness. Remember, she went from negativity to faith. And I believe there's some people in here that are going to go from negativity to faith and work hard and be a person of strength. And she feared the Lord and walked in faith. Hallelujah. Here she was in the middle of blessing and the middle of cursing at the same time. Have you ever felt like everything's going right and everything's going wrong all in the same week? Have you ever felt like you've been right in the middle of that? We were blessed with a television set a few years ago, and my father-in-law gave us the money to buy a big TV. He said, you need a big TV. I said, well, yes, sir. I'll be obedient. So I'm going to give you the money, you go get this TV. So I went to pick up this TV, and I drove our old van. Now, this is a van we weren't driving at the time. It was set outside the house. I got in it, prayed a little bit. It started right up. I went to pick up the TV. They loaded it in the back of the TV. And I'm leaving the store, getting ready to go home, and all of a sudden, my car won't start. And if you know me, you know I'm mechanically declined. Come on, somebody. I don't... I'm one of those guys who just put the hood up and just look at it <laughs> and wait for somebody to come and help. What you got going on? Well, yeah, as you can see there, it's uh, yeah, yeah. And I'm sitting there in the car waiting for the tow truck to come, and I realize I'm in the middle. I've got a blessing behind me and a curse in front of me. And man, God began to speak to me. He reminded me of this story because he wanted me to let you know some of you are right in the middle and you feel like you have a blessing in front of you, a curse behind you, and you feel like you don't know which way to go. But let me tell you something. Just like Ruth, just like this Proverbs 31 woman, just like these women in the Bible, you can choose to walk in the goodness of God. You can choose to say, even though it's rough right now, even though there's rough things behind me, even though that's in my past, I choose to move forward because I know that there's a blessing in my pressing. Come on, somebody. I I know that if I will let those things which are behind me go and press towards the mark of the high calling of God, I will be victorious. Hallelujah. And lastly, I want to talk about the blessing of generosity. The blessing of generosity. The Bible tells us as we give, it's given back to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. There's another lady in the Bible named Abigail. And we see here where David and his men were running from Saul. They're going through this terrible time, and they're seeking some help. And they say, why don't you go over to this guy named Nabal? Now, we help protect him. He should be kind to you. He should take care of you. They go over to talk to him, and all of a sudden, he says, he comes out and just defies David, begins talking bad about him, saying all kind of bad things. And David gets mad, and he says, well, we're going to go and take care of business. And all of a sudden, the men go to Abigail. How many know sometimes you got to go to the women? Hello? Because, Pastor, us as men, we can be pig-headed, we can be thick-headed, but God has to come through the women sometime. And, I, you know, I'm always like, I'm the man of God. I know how to hear from God. Bless God. And April say, well, I really feel like this is what needs to be done. And I'll look at her and say, 
You're absolutely right. Now, I don't say it like that to her. Come on, I have to make it look like I made the decision. But she's the one that's right. And so the servants go to Nabal's wife, and they say, this is what's going on. And immediately, I love her response. Because if she had not done what she did, then everyone would have been wiped out, her children, the, the whole land, all of her foes, all of her family would be wiped out. But this is what she does. I want you to go to 1 Samuel chapter 25. I want to read this, verse 18. And they go to Abigail, and this is what she does. Then Abigail made haste and took 200 loaves and two bottles of wine and five sheep ready dressed and five measures of parched corn and 100 clusters of raisins, 200 cakes of figs, and laid them on the donkeys. <laughs> you guys would laugh about that. See, you're embarrassing me, right? And she took them and laid them at David's feet. What she did was she said, I know the way to get out of this trouble. I know how I can save our family. I know how I can make a way where there is no way. She said, I'm going to, with haste, or one translation says she did it quickly, I'm going to sow the best seed that I have. Come on, somebody. And she took that seed, and she sowed it at David's feet. And the Bible says that everything changed. The whole situation changed for her. And then Nabal was struck dead and all of a sudden Abigail ends up becoming a wife of David. Come on, somebody, when you sow a seed, when you get into the blessing of generosity on your life, it will change your whole circumstance, change your whole situation, but it's not about just doing what you want to do. It's doing it with haste and giving your best. As a woman of generosity, we see throughout the Bible, whenever women rose up and said, I'm going to sow a seed, I'm going to bake you a cake first, I'm going to give out of my uh, need, God's going to turn it around, he's going to bless you. And you're going to see that every one of your needs are taken care of. And God will totally change your life. Her whole life changed right there. She became one of the treasured wives of David. And I'm telling you, she went from living in a life that was being treated bad and had a horrible husband to living in a life where she was treated with grace. Come on, somebody. Proverbs 10.22 says, It's the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and adds no sorrow to it. And today, I want to pray a blessing over you. I want to pronounce that over you because the Word of God tells us that where we're together, when we're in unity, that God will command a blessing right there. And maybe it's the blessing of obedience that you need today. Maybe you're at a place where you say, I just need to learn to say yes. I need to learn that whatever God's calling me to do, whatever God's put in my heart, I'm going to say yes to. Maybe it's the blessing of expectation. You say, I need to rise up and, and declare that what God's called me to do, it's going to happen. And I'm going to prepare myself. Or maybe it's the blessing of courage. I need to not run from the battle, but I need to run to the battle. Or the blessing of favor on your life. The blessing of generosity. I'm going to command this blessing over all of you today. And I believe that if you will, by faith, receive that, you're going to see God do something in your life. Amen? I want all the mothers to stand, if you would. And I want to invite you all to come forward to the altar. April, if you come and help me. Come on, let's clap for them as they come. Yeah, yeah, they look all pretty today. You can keep clapping. Come on, men, rise up and call your wife blessed. Call your mother's blessed today. Praise God. Praise God. And I declare throughout your life, the blessing of the Lord is going to make you rich and then bring no sorrow on your life. What that's saying is when you receive the blessing of God, the things are going to be well for you. That you're going to be happy, healed, favored, all your circumstances well. 
And I believe that over your life today. And I declare that as many of you, God has been calling you. He's been speaking to you. And he's just waiting for your yes. He's waiting for your obedience. He's waiting for you to say, be it unto me. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in Christ my Savior. I believe that God's put something on the inside of you that's going to cause other people's dreams and gifts to rise up. I believe there's a courage and a tenacity that's coming on you today. That you're going to say, I'm not just a mom. Come on. Many people, what do you do? Oh, I'm just a mom. I'm just a stay-at-home wife. No, no. You're called by God. Glorious within. Mighty woman of God. And God's going to put that on the inside of you. He's going to minister life to you. And I declare the blessing of favor upon you. Cecilia, just like Ruth, God is dropping handfuls of blessing, handfuls of peace. At times when you feel like, I don't know how I'm going to move on, how I'm going to continue on, God's dropping handfuls of peace in front of you. Handfuls of joy. And I declare the blessing of courage upon your life today. But you're not going to run from the battle. But you're going to run towards it in the name of Jesus. And God, I command the blessing upon her, Lord. God, we thank you, Lord, that you are ministering to her. Ministering life and peace. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. God, we thank you for that. We give you praise. We thank you, Jesus. Come on, just lift your hands, you moms that are down here. And you know what? Matter of fact, all the ladies can come out. Even if you're not a mother, come on down. Is that all right, Pastor Gail? I felt led. Just all the ladies come down because God's raising up these princess warriors. And I know many of you say, well, I haven't had any natural children of my own, but you're mothers to some people. I see Paula Stevenson out there that mothers many young ladies in this ministry and teaches them the ways of the world, watching what God is doing in their life. So, Father, we thank you right now for the blessing of heaven upon these ladies. God, I thank you, Lord, that you've called them to this sacred ministry. God, you've called them here today, and it's not an accident or happenstance that they're gathered here. And your word says that we are right here, and where you find unity, you command a blessing. God, we're gathered here in your name, and I command the blessing of God upon these ladies. Lord, I thank you that they will be obedient to all that you say. God, I thank you that favor will rise up upon them in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you that courage and tenacity will be theirs. And Lord, I thank you for divine expectation in the name of Jesus. Yeah, divine expectation. Somebody needs to grab that by faith. God spoke something to your life and you haven't seen it come to pass, but divine expectation in the name of Jesus. Yeah, the Lord says, I called you and I've spoken it over your life. But you just haven't seen it come to pass yet. But today I declare divine expectation upon you in the name of Jesus and the blessing of expectation to come to you. God, I thank you for courage in Jesus' name. God, I thank you, Lord, that she will walk in the fullness of what you've spoken to her, Lord God. And we give you praise, Lord. God, I thank you for divine courage upon her life in Jesus' name. God, we love you, Lord. We thank you. Yeah, Diane, just get ready. The things that you've prayed for, the things that you've asked for, believe you receive it in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing. God, I declare favor upon you. Yeah, you're getting ready to see God open doors for you that have been closed historically. You're getting ready to see God prepare. I see him preparing a table before you in the presence of your enemies. People that have said this about you and said that about you, they're getting ready to watch the hand of God upon your life and the favor and the blessing of the Lord upon you. In Jesus' name, come on, receive. Receive right now. There's a blessing upon you, Barb, for your faithfulness and for your generosity and your service. The blessing of the Lord is coming upon you now. Yeah, 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 there it goes. Come on, somebody just worship God right now. 
God, we give you praise, Lord. We thank you for divine courage in Jesus' name. Courage to stand up in the face of adversity. God, we love you and we thank you, Jesus. Ma'am, right there. Yeah, yeah, this is a special day for you. Not only getting to be here with your family, but I just heard the Lord, he pointed you out to me and he wanted me to let you know that you're one of those, you've been a strong, you've been a courageous person your whole life. There's things that you've had to stand up in the face of and say, no, I'm not gonna be moved. That's not gonna come against me. And God's seen that faithfulness. And there's something you've been asking God for and you've been praying for, and you've just been saying, God, I don't wanna always have to be the strong one. God, I wanna just relax in this season of my life. And, uh, and the Lord would say, he's heard you he's heard you and there's a peace coming to you in the name of Jesus my wife's gonna put her hands on your head there's a peace that's coming to you in the name of Jesus and yeah the joy of the Lord is strengthening you and those heavy burdens that have been on your shoulders they're coming off in the name of Jesus yeah we thank you Lord and there's a supernatural joy that's gonna come to you like never before and lift every burden off of you in Jesus name and does that minister to you? Yeah, yeah. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God, we worship you. We thank you, Jesus. We praise you. Courage and tenacity. Courage and tenacity. When I came over here to you too, I heard the Lord say, courage and tenacity. Courage and tenacity. You've had to hold on to some things and you've had to trust God and you've had to pray your way through. But divine courage is coming on you like never before in the name of Jesus. And the blessing of the Lord is not going to cause sorrow to you in Jesus' name. And tenacity in Jesus' name. Yeah, yeah. You say, I've been like that that holds on and I'm not going to let go and the tenacity that you've shown God says I'm blessing you for that I'm blessing you for that and you will see the victory in the name of Jesus if you do not give up so father we bless these ladies today God we ask that you would move in their midst God I thank you for those that are here today filled with joy because it's Mother's Day, God, that you increase their joy. And God, those that are here in the valley of decision, feeling like I don't know how I should feel, I'm, I'm hurt, or maybe I haven't talked to my children, or maybe my mother's not here today and there's pain. God, I pray that your hand would come upon them and heal them in the name of Jesus. God, let your healing virtues sweep through this crowd. God, physical healing, emotional healing, financial healing, mental healing in the name of Jesus. We thank you for it. God, we confer and we command the blessing of God upon every woman in Jesus' mighty name. If you believe and receive that, give the Lord a great, great big hand of praise. We thank you. Come on, I want you to give a lady next to you. Reach over and give them a hug and declare they are blessed in Jesus' name.